My the wife devil, is expected. Mm-hmm. We should set this up though, okay? I know not everybody's on Twitter, not maybe not everybody's. Okay, saw you it. set it up then, yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 so wait, wait, so let me Yeah. Let me try to pull it up. Okay. So this was last weekend, right? This is very recent. This last was like weekend, Saturday, I believe. Yeah, really? last weekend. On Friday. Uh there was a board that was getting a lot of buzz on Twitter. And part of the reason was that something very unusual happened. CMC, Christian McCaffrey, fell to third not, pick. To you know, 1.03, the third pick. And that almost never happens. I don't care He's what draft you're in. Consensus 101. Yeah. And this was an yeah. FFPC draft, the football guys. So you know, this is playing for that grand $500,000 prize. So CMC falling to pick three, or to, to pick three mm-hmm. is just unheard of. Then to come to find out that the person drafting in slot three had auto drafted that pick. Mm-hmm. Who's one guy you've been high on all year? AJ Brown. I mean, that's I all I have to say Brown. is AJ Brown. This man has been AJ trying Brown. to get AJ Brown all year. I was getting into drafts specifically oh, yeah. to draft AJ Brown. He was just getting into drafts to draft AJ Brown, yeah. and he would always get sniped right yeah. ahead of him. 2.01, 2.02, yeah. et cetera. After Somehow, the from the third spot, the guy who got CMC was then still in auto draft mode and got AJ Brown. Yeah. To add matters I worse, was salty. we get back to the third round and he gets DeAndre Hopkins. D-hop. So obviously, in the third this, round. Is, this is all auto draft. One, you know, one of the you know, you know, ideal starts you could ever ask for being in that third slot, and then also in auto draft format. And so the board was originally posted by. Uh, the guys from Chasing the Helmet, an amazing podcast. If you ever want to get some idea and thought on what that, it's that's like, Scott Connor. Yeah, and I forget his co-host name. Yeah, um, he also does Dynasty and Chill. Yeah, which when I very I yeah. started listening to. So his podcast. would fully endorse uh, listening in on that podcast. Just great insight on you know drafting and and things to think about while drafting, especially if you're looking at the uh, FFPC. And I think they do other drafts as well, but. So they're doing this podcast, and I'm listening in, and they're talking about how this guy from the three spot is just like in auto draft mode, and he's just landing all these amazing picks. Mm -hmm. So then I get, or we get a random text later in the day that, hey, guys, I did a draft, but it was an auto draft. I ran into some issues. No, no, no. no, no, no. Actually, it was like, (laughs) fuck. I forgot that I had a draft at this time. Yeah, yeah. So to add some context... I'm expecting a baby any day now. Yes, any day now. Putting together the crib, yeah. the nursery, and I just, I don't know how I forgot, Yeah. but I just, I forgot. Like, I, I think I had purchased, or I think I had entered that draft maybe the day before. And so whenever you don't draft, like, yeah. or, or like enter a draft that day, at least for me, yeah. I just forget. Unless yeah. I set an alarm like or put it into my calendar. How rich. Yeah, like I have to go... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, three fifty, whatever. I forgot about so it. So what's this? No, what, no, what, no. I forgot about it. <laughs> you didn't draft any like, of these players. You know, hey. I didn't draft a single player but the twentieth pick. The worst. The worst pick. Because the I worst, came in. The worst, the worst pick in the draft. draft was yeah. the pick okay, who are the players on this team? All right, so let's look at this. Like he has to look at because he don't even know. <laughs> no, no, I have no idea. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I started off with CMC, AJ Brown. DeAndre Hopkins, Follow that up with Josh Jacobs, Mark Andrews, and Noah Fant. Who are another one of my favorites. Corlin uh. Sutton, Leonard Fournette, Brandon Cooks, who I think is going to be a surprise this year. Got Tom Brady, but I also got some upside uh, in the 15th round with Justin Fields. Okay. Just in case if y'all were wondering. Right. Uh, <laughs> got Corey Davis, who I believe is going to be the number one on the Jets. I think he's... Going yeah. to the Jets, I think he's going to be number one they receiver like there. They, they paid him like one. And they made Crowder cut his set. That's a whole separate podcast in and of itself. Uh, I got McColl. I'm not high on McColl, though. Uh, he has upside, though. Yeah, he has upside. He's in the right situation. I mean, really, it's a start. It's a start. Yeah. Some of yeah. those other picks, you know, maybe. But landing CMC with the... 1.03, getting A.J. Brown. Just the fact that you you know? And the unique build and getting, you know, mm-hmm. a Goddard and a Fant. Or sorry, an Andrews and a Fant on the same team. That's a very, it's just a very unique build that, yeah. you know, has some potential. That could be a contender. Yeah. An auto and, draft. 
I mean, three hole. And I don't. I, I honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think you would have drafted better than. No. <laughs> Come on now. Come on no. now. Actually, I just yeah. auto drafted again during this podcast. And to be honest, right, that's kind of who I wanted yeah. anyway. We but need you. Don't do any more drafts until after the baby comes, because clearly your mind is. It's someplace. It's someplace. No, what are you Which saying? Is okay. Which do is okay. more drafts. Don't draft them. <laughs> auto draft. Just <laughs> go back and see the board when it's done. Maybe draft pick twenty. But good luck. <laughs> but but I do want to make this clear though. If you guys think that just because I auto drafted that entire team, that I'm not gonna celebrate as if I chose that entire team, you have another thing coming. <laughs> I'm throwing a parade. <laughs> Listen, the first thing I'm doing is buying hey, a G wagon. I'm leasing a G wagon. I don't blame you. I'm leasing it. I'm leasing a G wagon. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not yeah. buying it. I'm not yeah. buying it. I'm gonna lease it for a year. Then yeah. I can swap the lease or something. No, uh, I am going to celebrate this team. Like no other draft that I've oh, ever been in. Be so I'm going to be. <laughs> I said, God, give me a warning. Please take me for the morning so I leave more disappointments than I ever will appointments. Give a fuck about your feelings. Rub it in. This your ointment can't depend. This is the first and 15 podcast, the only podcast that's trying to get you paid. I'm the original Chris, and I'm here with two time FFPC champion AB. I'm also here with Dio the Machine, our dynasty guru. You know what, guys? I want to jump right into this podcast this week, and I want to talk about Big Ben. He has three receivers that are going really high in these drafts. And how many times can we expect a 39 year old quarterback? to feed three receivers in a single offense, especially when they just drafted Najee Harris. I mean, are we sure it's just three? It may be four or five. Mm. Maybe five. five Maybe five. Maybe five. Yeah, so that's that's a good question. I mean, we all know the the receivers he has right now. He has Juju, he has Deontay, and he has Chase, you Mm -hmm. know. Um, And, you know, last year they actually all were – ranked in the top 25 as far as fantasy points. So he actually did produce um, three top wide receivers to some extent. Um, The question we have now is, is he going to be able to do it again? Um, Like you mentioned, he brought in a a running back now, which last year they didn't really have a running back. They really couldn't run the ball very well, whether it's due to not a talented enough back in the backfield or, you know, the offensive line just being horrible, kind of like they still are now. Um, But regardless, they definitely have to pass a lot more than what they probably wanted to do. So now, you know, he's older, like you said. He's 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 knocking on the 40-year-old door. Yeah. Um, He's dealt with injuries. I think he missed all of, what was it, 2019 or 2018 or most of it. Mm-hmm. We 2019. Already hearing, yeah, we're already hearing reports now that he had to leave practice for some undisclosed injury we don't even know about. I didn't hear um, that, but okay. Yeah, I think that was a couple <laughs> of days ago. Um, Bringing in a running back. I would assume Tomlin would want to run the ball a fair amount more. Um, and with that, you know, are they going to actually run the ball or are they going to dump it off to him a little bit, which actually will benefit Ben, but at the same time, it's not really going to help the receivers. So I don't know. I mean, personally, and you did kind of allude to the fact that they added, I mean, they have other receivers. They have James Washington. They have Ray Ray McLeod, I believe his name is, um, not to mention their tight ends, Ebron and the mm-hmm. rookie. So is he going to be able to allow those three receivers to be top 25 receivers again this year? I would kind of side on the, the, the side of no, you know. I, I think I'm in agreement with you, although I think at their current ADPs, I'm willing to, to draft the majority of them. Juju, I'm still very iffy on. Now, where are their ADPs right now? I, I believe Deontay's in the fifth. Deontay's typically in the fifth. Juju, Juju, so Juju, I think, is in the – Seventh, but I think Chase is in the the six. So they're literally one round after each other. Correct, correct, correct. And some people may argue that Claypool may have the most upside. I I'm a sucker for targets, so Deontay's been my guy. Yeah, you, Deontay loved Deontay for a while. Yeah, actually. Deontay was my guy last year. Yeah, uh, and I'm looking for this year's Deontay. We think we found him. Uh, but getting back to the Big Bang question, actually, when I was saying I think they have five receiving options. I was referring to Deontay, Mm -hmm. Claypool, Mm -hmm. Juju, for me in that particular order. Mm -hmm. But then I was also referring to Ebron. Okay. 
who people who, just totally forget and disrespect right now. Disrespect it. Right. Right. Like he's not just even around. Disrespect. No more. Like he's not even on the Steelers or something. He's like literally that. one of my highest owned players because he's just free. Right. Okay? He, he he was the Kyle Pitts before the current Kyle Pitts. It's funny that people, you know, <laughs> we always, everyone always touts the idea that, um, you know, rookie tight ends do not come into the league and produce. Pittsburgh drafts a tight end, and now we're scared of Eric Ebron. I don't get it. But either way, he's free. So if you're looking for a tight end at the end of drafts, I just let people take such and such player, and then, okay, let me grab Ebron. Yeah, and come we'll on. talk about tight ends yeah. a little later. But yeah. So Ebron, and then the fifth guy for me was actually Najee Harris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we finally have a traditional three-down back. This is a complex situation, and there's a wide range of outcomes I actually am favoring, I think, the positive outcomes, again, taking into account their ADP. So I think it may be a situation of addition by subtraction. And by that, I mean a more balanced offense, less pass volume, Mm -hmm. especially these short, quick passes, as well as, you know, this change in the offensive, you know, scheme with Mm -hmm. the new OC coming in. I think the quality of targets will actually be better for the wide receivers. Okay. I think them having a more balanced offense with not someone like Najee Harris that defenses really have to pay attention to, I think will open things up for the wide receivers. Okay. But the question was, do you think they're all going to be fantasy valuable? Absolutely. All three of them. Absolutely. It depends. The okay. format is always dependent on the format. You always have to go back to what well, type well, of league you're drafting let's, let's keep it on FFPC. So if we're talking High FFPC stakes. where yeah. you're starting, you have to start two wide receivers and you can start two flexes. Yeah. So it's uh, one, one point PPR. One point PPR. Yeah. I think they all have value, especially someone like Juju who may have a low A dot. Mm-hmm. You know, his average depth of target may be very low, so he may not get the yardage. Uh, but historic, I mean, historically, he's been shown to have some yak. Yeah. In certain years. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think he's necessarily lost that athleticism. But I think opening up the offense, being a little bit more creative, we may see, again, more high-value targets, whether it's being more creative in the passing game mm-hmm. or driving the ball a little bit more you know, downfield or receivers seeing uh, more men in the box and more one-on-one activity yeah. on the outsides or over the middle of the field because people are now worried about Najee Harris. See, but here's the thing. The last time we saw Big Ben throw this many passes, he had the 2019 elbow surgery yeah. and missed the entire season. Do we expect Big Ben to play another season with 40-plus passes with this receiving core? Uh, to me, it seems like they drafted Najee Harris because they wanted – to move towards a more balanced offense. I agree. And so can we really expect those receivers to get the same targets that they got last year? Again, they may not get the same targets, but they may get higher quality, quality targets. Target. I, I see what Remember, you're saying. Remember, their targets from last year, we would watch. I mean, Juju was just getting – he was actually – he saw a fair amount of targets. He, he, he disappointed some people, but he actually produced a fair amount. But it was his yardage that, were, that was yeah. you know, disappointing from a yardage standpoint. Yeah, so yeah. – I think when I think again, if defenses have more to think about, if the offensive play calling becomes more creative, then we again may see a situation where those targets are higher value, now, now, higher a dot, more yak, allowing these players to operate in space as opposed to so close to the line of scrimmage where okay. they're immediately getting targeted as soon as they catch the ball so, or tackled so when they get. To- who is their new OC? I I, I, re- I don't recall. So do we know? Yes, yeah. yes. So their new OC is Matt Canada. Mm-hmm. Was he with them before? Or wh- wh- where did he come from? Um, I believe they had Matt Canada last yeah. year. Matt okay. Canada is on record with saying that that he wants to open up that offense. Okay. But to me, as you guys stated on last episode, they're saying one thing but doing well, another. What they're doing? Yeah. I don't yeah. necessarily know that they're doing another. I think they're filling a hole. I mean, number one. Fickner himself, I don't, I don't know who was calling the plays last year, to be quite honest. I don't know if it was Big Ben because of his elbow, that mm-hmm. he didn't really want to drive the ball down the field, or they just didn't have a very experienced play caller. It was one of those teams that we all saw it early in the season. They were not as good as their record had indicated. Right. And so a lot of their flaws were just, you know, hidden. Right, uh, right. And then later in the season, they got, they got a bit more exposed. So for me, I tend to be optimistic in these scenarios because – as you always allude to, things can always go one way or the other. Right. They change OC, wide, they may wide, get worse. I mean, wide range of outcomes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I think the team understanding their deficiencies last year, understanding that they need to be more balanced, 
I always look at that's one reason why I'm not as high on uh, a Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. Not that I don't think that they're going to be elite or very good, but for me, I think the that offense may struggle this year because they were so one-dimensional last year. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking from a strictly NFL perspective. That was one big reason why I didn't have them advancing to the Super Bowl is because you can't be a one-dimensional team in advance. You know, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. They had to learn how to run on their Super Bowl run to be able to advance. Right, it was right. their run game that got them over the hill. So right. I think Pittsburgh understands that. They understand that they cannot be one-dimensional. When you're one-dimensional, one year it may work. Baltimore Ravens, for instance. Yeah. But then when teams get tape on that and they understand, and it didn't take teams that long to get tape on Pittsburgh, they figured it out towards the end of the year, right. their offense stalled. So they have to understand that they got to be more balanced. The, the, only thing, the only thing I'll add to this conversation, because we are, again, referring to the, the Steelers receivers, is um, last year, specifically like somebody like Chase Claypool, he was getting a lot of touchdowns. I mean, his efficiency was, was pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, Yardage-wise, I... I I don't think he had a lot of yardage. I just remember him scoring a lot of touchdowns, even like with reverses. He was getting the ball running mm -hmm. it. Um, and I think there was a game he scored like three or four touchdowns in yeah. one game. Yeah. So, so he was having these crazy touchdown games, which, again, he was probably mid-20s as far as fantasy wide receiver points ranking. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that again. Because, again, yeah. they didn't have that running game last year. Yeah. So without – the running game last year, they had to kind of find these creative ways yeah. to pass the ball in short yardage and still score. Now that you have the number one running back in the draft, you would think they would say, okay, let's not worry about throwing these little screens. I mean, they might still do it because it was effective. They were actually sweeps, reverses, right. handoffs. Right. I, mean, I mean, there was hitch routes. They, were, know, they, they manufactured him touches. They found right. creative ways to get him the ball. But the other thing that you could say is that that was his rookie year. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's going to get better. As much as I love Deontay this, last year, I'm lukewarm this year. Mm. It's more of a situation where... Not our boy Deontay. Yeah. I mean, he's going in the fifth round, so it's more of a situation where ideally, you know, there's other wide receivers that may fall. Before, earlier in the year, it was Robert Woods, and I would much rather have a Robert Woods than a Deontay Johnson. Yeah. But you're right. You know, you, you don't know how Chase Claypool is going to, or how they're going to incorporate him in this new offense right. uh, moving into year two. So. And... and and we can move on right after this, but I, I did hear when I think I put it in our group chat, somebody was talking up Ray Ray McLeod, mm -hmm. who's the fifth wide receiver. Yeah. Like, yeah. They yeah. still got Jane watching, and then yeah. they just ran, like, how are they even going to get the ball to all yeah, these other yeah. receivers? So we'll see what happens, but yeah. I don't know. I, I still think that it's a lot to ask a 39 year old quarterback who has knocking the type of injuries. Like, I mean, right knocking there. on 40. Yeah. Hey, I'm sure he's talking to Tom Brady. OK, so uh, this I mean, is the one thing compare Big well, Ben to this is the one thing with the elbow <laughs> the injury. I personally would expect him uh, and I have not talked to anyone in the medical community, uh, but I wouldn't expect him to perform worse than he did last year. I think another year removed from that elbow surgery, in my mind, I don't see that he can get any worse. I think he can only get better. I would anticipate that he should be able to push the ball further down the field a year removed. Maybe not. Maybe. I, the, the thing I'm that just gives me though. a little bit of hesitancy is he, he keeps, well, as of late, he keeps talking about potential retirement, mm -hmm. which means he's kind of He's been talking about, about retirement for like the last 10 years. I know. Because I, I think his body is telling him that, yeah, hey, yeah. I, think that's I need little, to retire. retire. Like he's, he's starting to feel like. Bent the drama queen. Really let's be honest. He is. Bent the drama he queen. He is. But I just, I just can't shake it. Like he almost feels like my body is saying I can't go too much longer. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. And we well, start, speaking of drama queens, let's talk about the Cowboys. I have a good question for you guys. Gosh, we got to talk about shots. the Cowboys. Yes. <laughs> yes. Taking shots. Yes. This is a Houston podcast, so Hates yes. <laughs> but let's talk about no, Zeke we can for talk a about second. The Cowboys, yeah. Yeah. And let's talk about Zeke for a second. Okay. Are we expecting to see the old Zeke or Zeke getting old? Now, I know that he just got into the league really in 2016 before a running back. He's getting up in age. Yeah. Do we expect Zeke to return to old form or is Zeke, Zeke old? Zeke really isn't that old. Okay, you if you want to yeah. say he's had some mileage, you can say he's had some mileage. I mean, but you he's, can't say he definitely has some he mileage. Has, but he's built for it. Yeah, he he's is. He's built for he it. He is. So let me start off with the negatives. The negatives is Tony Pollard. I think that's the elephant in the room. Tony Pollard showed that he is a legit NFL back. I'm not in agreement that I think, you know, most people are like, oh, Tony Paul is better than Zeke. There's so much that goes into being an NFL running back and to be able to handle a large 
workload week in and week out. Yeah. Come talk to me about Tony Pollard being a better back than Zeke six, seven weeks after having 15 plus workload. touches. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So there's something, yeah. there's something to that. Okay. But even with Tony Pollard looking as good as he has looked, I am 100% buying the dip. On Zeke. Zeke. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a, it's a situation where I may have him ranked like top four, top five running back, mm-hmm. but I try to get him back you know, in of the back first. in that eighth, ninth, tenth. I've gotten him as late as the uh, right. you know, one, uh, 110 right. uh, pick. And so he's definitely somebody I'm buying. I'm really buying that Dallas offense, the return of that Dallas O line. The O line is still very thin as far as depth wise. So, you know, they suffer. A number, you know, more than one injury on that O line, we may be looking at a similar situation. But the return of Dak, CD in the second year, return of Amari Cooper, Gallup. We have Schultz and Jarwin there. Weapons galore. Everywhere. Weapons galore. Yeah. Defenses the can't load the, the box. Right. They can't load the box. So this right. man is going to be operating and running in a highly efficient offense. He could score literally 15 plus touchdowns. Hmm. He's going to catch the ball quite often. And he, we know he produces on the ground. So we could be yeah. looking at a situation of 1,800 plus yards. He's, I can't, unless he suffers an injury, he's obviously going to have double digit touchdowns. But I'm looking in a range of 15 plus. By the dip. It's I don't not know. A hard decision. It's not I don't a hard know. decision. So, <clears throat> it, are we, so the question was is, are we going to get the old Zeke or is Zeke old? Doesn't matter. Um, I, so I do think Zeke is. Getting up there in age for running backs, you know, he is on his second contract, which is kind of the the time period where you start to see a decline to some extent. Um, but but I was looking at Zeke's old stats. Um, Zeke has hit a thousand yards every single year of his career except for his second year, and that year he had nine hundred something yards, close to a thousand. That was the season where he was suspended. For whatever was going on with Goodell, you remember that season where right. he had to miss the beginning of the season. So he almost, I mean, if, if he didn't have the, that suspension, he probably would have hit a thousand that year too. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so the funny thing is that year, and I, I believe it was 2017, and last year looked eerily similar. The 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 running attempts were around 240, something mm-hmm. like that. Every other season he had 300 plus, like right above 300. Um, the yardage that season was again 900 something. Last year he had 900 something, like very close to a thousand. Um, the biggest difference was last year he played five more games, you know, right? Than, than 2017. But that's huge, um, though, to play yeah, five more games and still not get a thousand yards. It definitely is huge. But the the biggest catalyst we have to take into account is not having Dak there. You know, absolutely. It, literally, all the pressure was on Zeke, and I mean. All these guys are human. You know, you exactly. lose Dak going off, of, going and into your a O-line. season. Yeah, going into O-line. You, you lose Dak, you lose your O-line, going into the season with all these high expectations, and then you start to realize, you know what, maybe you're not going to meet it. You know, maybe it gets to a point where you're like, you know, maybe I shouldn't be going as hard as I probably would have gone. Um, I mean, he was still getting the work. He was still putting in effort, but – I mean, people saw Zeke last yeah. year. Pe- Zeke was not the Zeke we were used to It was to no – we didn't yeah, see the feed Yeah, we didn't feed see Eden Zeke. We didn't we see didn't that see, excitement um, yeah. from him. Um, but, again, he still had 900-something yards. He still had, I believe, like six or seven touchdowns, which is kind of similar to what he's done all his career. I think maybe two other seasons he had double-digit yeah. touchdowns. But he's never had less than six touchdowns in a season. Now, you did mention Pollard, who was my boy mm-hmm. from the day he was drafted. I yeah. love Pollard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Pollard has a unique skill set. Um like you were saying, we probably can't envision Pollard being a true every down back in the sense that we see mm-hmm. Zeke. But I think the NFL is slightly changing where there's different type of running backs. Yeah. You know, you have your your grinder, Derrick Henry type running yeah. back who we can p- possibly place Zeke kind of yeah. in. And then you have your finesse running back like your Miles Sanders, mm-hmm. CEH type, yeah. which kind of Pollard falls into. So it's one of those things of what kind of offense do the Cowboys want to run. Yeah. I still think they want to run the ground and pound. Yeah. Zeke is our guy. And I, I mentioned this last week. When the Cowboys are winning a game, they're going to give it to their, their yeah. horse in the backfield. Yeah. And Zeke is going to keep pounding. And, and Zeke is the type of running back we've seen where as the game progresses, yeah. he gets better. Yeah. The yard is coming in like yeah. bundles, you know? Yeah. And those touchdowns will go up. So yeah. personally, I don't feel like yeah. – Zeke is old at all. Yeah. I feel like I, ne- I don't even think there's an old Zeke. I, I still think we have the same Zeke. He's 26 yeah. years old. 26, yeah. Okay, so he's not, I mean, 
He's 26. Right. Okay. But a couple different things. You brought up the human element. I think that is so important, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. If you're on a losing team, you've lost your O line, you lost your boy Dak, you're starting mm -hmm. you're not quarterback, making a playoff. you're looking at Dalton, you're not making the playoffs, your defense is historically bad. You can try to play as hard as you want to play, right. but are you really going to? Be so he mailed as hard it in, as, is what you're saying. No, I'm not saying he mailed it in. I'm just saying there's there's just a different. You know, it's it's like when you get ready to go on a on a long distance run. You know, if I'm you know feeling good, you know I got my endorphins running. This is an easy three mile run. Well, right. I shouldn't say easy. This is a a less than <laughs> difficult three mile run. Right. But if it's been a long work day. You know, work was just dragged on longer than it should. Mm -hmm. You got bad news in whatever aspect right. of life. You stressed you got to bad. some extent. You stressed to some extent. You maybe didn't get a good night's sleep. You ate a steak the night before. You're not going you're not gonna have that same type of energy running that mile. You may right. still want to run that mile in 15 minutes or however, you know, I don't know how people, I don't know how people run three miles, but right. you may, you, you may want to still come, you know, run at the same you know rate, but you may, you're, you're likely not going to be able to, there's a right. human element to that. So I a hundred percent agree with that. The other thing too, is their defense was so bad last year. Yeah. How do teams counteract a bad defense or how do they deal with having a bad defense? You mean on the, the offense? On the, they from the offense. The ball. Yeah, but from a standpoint, if you understand that your defense is bad... Game management, clock management. Clock management, yeah, and yeah. you do that by running the ball. So if you know your defense was struggling last year, you're not going to go into the following year and saying, okay, let's throw the ball around I got the you. yard. I got you. And again, we, we love the Dallas offense, high-paced offense. I'm not saying that their pass offenses. Begrudgingly, we love the Dallas offense. Yeah. We still Texans fans <laughs> yeah. in this piece. We like the Dallas offense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> well, I don't quick, know. I just didn't see that pop in Zeke that I've seen but, but, in years prior. But real okay, quick. But he got his boy Dak back. He got the offensive line back. We're, we're, okay. we're all, we're, we haven't mentioned this once. He was hurt last year as well. Yeah. He actually missed the game. I think that's the yeah. first game he missed yeah. in his career due to injury. I mean, we saw him fumbling. We, you, you just saw, you saw a different type of Zeke. And I don't right. think it had anything to do with age. It He's, seems like everything you guys are saying sounds like a running back that is on the decline. Well, no, not at, no, no. I, Remember, I, situation matters. O line matters. Quarterback matters. Offense matters. If your if your O line is decimated, you lose your starting quarterback, and your offense takes a significant hit. You're not going to produce as well. Yeah. How well, about this, Dio? You like to talk about contracts. Do you yeah. think the Cowboys feel good about the contract that Zeke has? Right not now? at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, don't pay running. Not back. not only do I think they don't feel good about it. I think Zeke might be short-lived with the Cowboys. And I'm mm. totally speculating here. Mm -hmm. You know, don't take this as gospel. But <laughs> we might have two or three years left of Zeke yeah. in mm. Dallas with that contract. So buy the yeah. dip now. Get your yeah. Zeke now, and then yeah. we can maybe be so, out on him next year. Yeah. Get him now. Yeah, I mean, they just have too many. The, the, that Amari contract, yeah. the Dak contract, they just paid Dak. You know, mm -hmm. something has to give. You right. know, so He's what you see. want in a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. He is a safe floor with upside. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, again, that's where rookies come into play. You want players on that rookie contract, especially in those top skill position players. And don't forget, they still got Pollard. I mean, even though we say he ain't truly an every yeah. down back, it's easier for them to yeah. say Zeke. And maybe, you know, right I think I, when, I, when I say he's not an every down back, there are not a lot of every down backs, traditional three down backs that can True. be, you know, workhorses in the league. And it has nothing to do with his size. I think the type of back that he is, he relies a lot on explosion. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're giving someone like that 20 touches a game, particularly like 15 plus carries a game, at some point you're going to lose that explosion. This is right. the NFL. Right. People get hit and right. they get hit hard. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. last year we saw him run quite freely, you know, explode through those holes. Mm -hmm. But you do that enough over, it's wear down over on especially over a 17 game, you know, season now. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I agree. I agree. Now, we're starting to see rookies become more integral parts of offenses in the league. I mean, people are drafting Kyle Pitts as, as if he's a number one receiver. He's going extremely high in drafts. We're seeing Jamar Chase go extremely high in drafts. How do you guys address rookies in drafting and their ADPs? Oh, man. So this is – okay. We always start off with this disclaimer. Every situation is different because every situation is different. Let's take Kyle Pitts, for instance, though. Let's use that example. Kyle Pitts reminds me very much of CEH 
from 2020. How so? So obviously 2020, we dealt with COVID. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes, and that included players opting out of the 2020 season. When CEH was drafted in the first round, the very back end of the first round by Kansas City, I think most of the fantasy community felt like that was the ideal landing spot mm -hmm. for him. And not, to say, not that I was necessarily against the idea of that, but when I watched him, I, I didn't see this elite running back that everybody else had, had seen. Right. I felt like he was in a very elite offense with very elite receivers and a very elite quarterback, and that a number of backs would have been able to perform the way that he did. But he was going to a similar situation, to a very elite offense with a very elite QB and very elite receiving options. So I understood. But my biggest thing was that Damian Williams was going to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and right. so I was not sold, and so we saw just Ceh shoot up boards, and then Damian Williams opted out. So not only you know he moved from third, second round to now top five overall. Yeah, back in first. Round. Back in first, first round, round. Yeah. and he just I mean immediately jumped over a lot of players, right. and in my opinion, he was being drafted at his ceiling, and I never understand drafting a rookie. At, at their, their ceiling. ceiling. Correct. Understanding Correct. the wide variance and volatility that rookies coming into the league often bring mm -hmm. at the running back, wide receiver, especially the tight end position. So fast right. forward to Kyle Pitts. Immediately, even before being drafted, he was touted as one of the most amazing tight ends of all time. Prospects ever, yeah. Prospects ever, right? Yeah. yeah. So he, his ADP was already significantly high. He was already, I think, five or six tight end off the board. Similar situation. Julio leaves now. So mm -hmm. vacated targets. Now we see Kyle Pitts going into the second round, early third. I think it's just too rich for my blood. Right. He might get to the first round at some point yeah. here. So um, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, y'all know how when I first kind of was talking about Kyle Pitts to anybody, they were like, what are y'all talking about? This is a tight end and a rookie. He's not going to be that great. And I was like, man, this guy that – He's supposed to be one of the greats coming out the coming out the gate, um, but I agree. I feel like people are taking him at his ceiling, which I'm not gonna say he, he can't reach it. Everything yeah. seems to be aligning for him right now. Yeah, which you can't knock. I mean, Julio's out the door. Mm -hmm. um, they got other options. You're with a quarterback that historically has passed the ball quite a bit. Yeah, their defense still isn't that great, so most likely they're still gonna have to throw a lot this season. Yeah. Um, so I get it, but again. Like you said, you're, you're drafting him at, at his ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've had other great prospects come into the league. We, we mentioned Ebron earlier. Yeah. Um, other tight ends, TJ Hawkinson, Vernon Davis. Vernon Davis. They were all yeah. great prospects, great draft profiles. Um, and, you know, they had fairly good careers, but, but year one. But he's not a tight end, though. <laughs> okay, so let's say that. Okay, so even if he wasn't a tight end, let's whoa, say he's whoa. a receiver. If he's not a tight end, then what is he? He's a receiver. I say he's a receiver. Yeah. Say he's re so even if we say he's a receiver, who who's the guy I, a lot of people compare him to? Um, profile wild, they'll say like a Megatron. Like I was even telling people, I feel like he's the Megatron of tight end. Yep. If you look at Calvin Johnson's first season in the NFL, it was kind of underwhelming. Yeah, you know, it wasn't great. I mean, it was solid. Yeah, but he didn't put up these historic great numbers. Yeah. And we're talking about Calvin Johnson, yeah. somebody that's about to go into the Hall of Fame that had, what, an eight-year career yeah. mm -hmm. that every other season was dominating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying Kyle Pitts can't do it. Yeah. The question is, can he do it his rookie year? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I really feel, and this is just in general as far as all the rookies, I really feel like the, the fantasy community to some extent is overvaluing rookies. And we see it every year, especially early on. Part of that might be to blame on the fact that the – the recent Rick rookie success the mm -hmm. last few years. Um, so I, I get that. But, I mean, you can go back some years and you can see, like, the year Nikhil Harry was the first receiver drafted. He's supposed to be a great one. Yeah, ahead of AJ Trash, Brown. you know. <laughs> huh? no, we don't call players trash on the podcast. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, he's trash. But, yeah, no, we <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we do call Corey, players trash. <laughs> Corey Davis, there was a time he was the number one receiver taken. He, he had a, a suspect career. Uh, we, we already brought up the tight ends. You know, TJ Hawkinson didn't have that great of a first season. Yeah. Um, you have all these great profiles. And we're not even saying these players are bad or they won't become yeah. great. But they didn't start off great. Yeah. And the fact that we're taking pits where we're taking them now, it's just a little bit too rich for, for my blood personally. Yeah. And I, I, get, like, I get the idea that he, you know, they're going to move him around the formation. Mm -hmm. 
I profiled him more as this like elite red zone target. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was watching film, I felt like that's the thing that stood out to me the most is that he could win in the red zone in multiple areas. Right. Great hands, could high point the ball, could, you know, run a slant, could, you know, you know, caught the ball away from his body. Uh, and that's what the Atlanta Falcons were have been missing for a number of years. So right. he could definitely put up a quite a bit of touchdowns, but to have him come in and to take him in the second round where we historically take players, again, in the FFPC format, a tight end premium, we take players like George Kittle uh, and Darren Waller. He's going above George Kittle a little bit now, too. Yeah, we've seen mm -hmm. him go above George Kittle. For me, it's just too rich for my blood. I'm not even necessarily wanting to d take George Kittle in the second round. Me neither. Me neither. So it, he's one of those players where I like, if I miss on him, I'm fine. Because right, it's right. the second round, yeah. and I feel like I'm going to get somebody who yeah, has just as much potential. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Now, 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 I will say this about Pitts. For what I've been reading, they, they are, as far as practices reports, they are moving him around quite a bit yeah. um, on the offense. I think I saw a report where a reporter was like, they haven't seen him in the same spot yeah. twice. you know. So they're definitely trying to figure out ways to utilize his skill set. I think they even called him more of a weapon yeah. rather than a tight end or receiver. Um, but again, we're, we're drafting at his ceiling. There's and no that, value there. And again, I know we got to move on. But again, that gets to the point where like you're asking a rookie to come in and learn a completely new system a new head coach and a new OC that are also learning the players mm -hmm. that have returned and players that they have brought in, working with the new QB, th that's just a lot to ask for a player to take all of that in, learn the tight end position, learn you know this role, be you know moved around the formation, and expect him to excel and pay off that second round draft capital. Right, right. So right. now, now you did ask about the other rookies as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, the, the, I think the next rookie being drafted. Um, at, I don't know if we want to talk about running back because we kind of skipped. Go Najee. ahead. You know, Najee, we kind of alluded to him a little bit. Um, the only issue we have with Najee is probably his offensive line. You mm -hmm. know, but we do feel like he's going to get a lot of work. Um, they're definitely going to utilize him a fair amount. He's going to get the opportunity at the goal line. So we love that. Um, ETN, I feel like we've kind of had a little bit of debate as far as his, yeah. his, you know, projection to some extent. I personally like him. I like his draft capital. I like his skill set. Um, you, you – more so, I think you you more of a believer in James Robinson, so you feel like that's going to hinder him a little bit. <laughs> don't do team. that. Don't do that. Well, what, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no speak. Speak on <laughs> it. Speak on it. No, don't you you making it seem like I'm saying take James? No, no, no. no, no I'm number not one, saying that. I'm just, number one, you see, I have more like, shares of ETN than I do James Robinson. Okay, I didn't know. You I, I mean, I only, I only have one ETN. That's so you have no James Robinson. So I have zero. That's James what I Robinson. thought. That's what I thought. Okay. I just, I mean, I just don't. I, that's not a situation that I think I want to invest in at where I have to invest. Okay. So ETN reminds me a lot. He's not. It's not a player comp. I'm just saying the idea of ETN reminds me a lot of the idea of Clyde Ed Edward Tolaire. Okay. Where I watch film and I'm not like watching film and thinking, "Wow, this dude is amazing." You can put him in any position and he's just like. His talent is just going to like explode, or right. he ends up in a great he doesn't situation. Doesn't jump off the page to you. No, either, no, it's okay. like RPOs. You run through a wide open lane, or you know, uh, you know, he's running a he, he's running a uh, you know a slant against uh, a, a middle linebacker, and of course he's going to beat that linebacker. I got you. Or he's running a wheel route against an outside line. Like you know, it's things that it's plays that yes, I, I you know commend him for making, mm -hmm. but. On, you know, when we translate that to the NFL level, he's going to be able to do that against NFL skilled players. I just don't necessarily see it. I saw him, you know, I would just watch plays where he would just get tripped up too easily. I just, you know, him as an inside runner, I just was not a strong believer in. So yeah. if I'm drafting ETN where he's going, which is a fourth round, uh, and the, when I drafted him, I got him in the fifth round, which is one time I said, you know, if I'm going to be wrong, at least let me get him at value. But if I'm drafting him in the fourth round, I want to draft him with the idea that, okay, you know, maybe he has a limited role to start off the season, but yeah. then towards the end of the year can take over sure. that backfield, and I just don't see that. Me, me, what I like about him, I love his speed. Yeah. Like, he's super fast. He has these long strides. Yeah. You know, a taller guy, he kind of runs a little bit high, yeah. but, like, when he has that burst and when he's, like, in the open field, he, like, nobody's going to catch him. Yeah, you got to yeah. give him the space. You got to yeah. give him the space. Um, so, so I do like him. So, so do you think some of this hype surrounding rookies – have something to do with them getting a disproportionate of the work because of OTAs and rookie OTAs and veterans not coming in until later on? You mean as far as the current landscape? Right. What people are hearing? Mm -hmm. 
I don't think so. I mean, I don't know what you I think. Do. I, I agree. You think it's because people are hearing about him a little bit more now? Yeah, I think, you know, there's some veterans that either aren't showing up at OTAs or just, you know, they're there, but they're not, like, fully participating or they're going, like, half speed. You know, remember, a lot of what we're hearing, we're relying on beat writers. Right. Or we're relying on coaches just telling us what they want to tell us. Right. We're not relying on what we're actually seeing. Right. So some of that you have to take with a grain of salt. And it's hard to parse out what is real, what's not, what's significant, what's not. Good news to me is no news. Bad news is something that I want to, like, I pay attention to. Speaking of. I was going to ask, what you're saying then, would you then say once veterans come back as far as training camp that these rookies, ADPs, are going to start to depress a little bit? Is that what you're trying to say? I think we always start off with the rookies being drafted very highly. Then it comes down a bit. So it's going to pull back but a little bit. But this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Tell us, okay. champ. Tell us. <laughs> Let us know. No. This is what's going to happen. People, okay. be, be prepared. And this is why we talk about this on the podcast. Right. You got to anticipate that this is going to happen. Right. So I think I brought this up earlier. Let's take Jonathan Taylor, for instance. Mm-hmm. I love Jonathan Taylor's talent. I like the old line that he's behind. I like the play caller, et cetera. But... I don't love his situation enough to be able to draft him at where he's going. I think he's like his ADP is five or six overall, or maybe six, seven, somewhere around there. This is what's going to happen. Training camp's going to come around. Naheem Hines is going to have a good day. Mm -hmm. We're going to get some reports about that. Then all the chatter about, oh, Naheem Hines is going to be still in third down work is going to happen. What's that going to do to – what is that going to do to Jonathan Taylor's ADP? Push it back a little bit. Push it back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Then guess who else we're going to hear about? Marlon Mack. We're going to hear about Marlon Mack. Our our buddy from last year. Oh, man. Marlon Mack. Yeah. He looks amazing. He looks pre injury. He looks pre injury. He's got the burst. And then guess what's going to happen? The coach is going to come out and talk about how he has a great running back room. (laughs) He loves all of his guys. Everybody's going to get work. Everybody has specific (laughs) skill sets. And then we're going to get back into that same conversation that we had. And there's going to be discussion about, okay, well, remember when Marlon Mack was healthy, Mm -hmm. like it was really a three headed committee. Mm -hmm. And the and it's hard for me to like not even take that into a consideration and not have it be affected because that's what's going on with Miles Sanders right now. Mm-hmm. But what's going to happen is it's going to push his ADP. So I'm not going to take Jonathan Taylor right now. I'm going to wait for that news to drop mm-hmm. and then I'll take him, you know, in the back. That's end a good of the point second. you're making. So so you're basically saying even if you like a player, if you kind of can forecast a player's ADP. Moving back. I can forecast news. I can forecast right. X player is looks great. X player had a great, you know, uh, two to three days of camp. Gotcha. Uh, or X player got injured, and gotcha. it may be like something so, as so simple as an so ankle you'll sprain. So wait till that happens, and then you'll say, okay, now let me go get the guy. Take advantage. I like. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that. You know, I'm cheap. I want, I, want, I, want, I want things I'm at a discount. Too. We're, we're Nigerians, man. You know, we, we definitely Nigerians cheap. are not cheap. Let's not, let's, not, let's not put that out there. We're not cheap like that. But I want things at a discount. Yeah. You know, I want things at a discount. So Let's stay on the topic of rookies, though. When do you guys expect Trey Lance and Justin Fields to actually start a game? Because people are drafting them so low, but I tend to take a more established quarterback um, higher in my draft, and then I like to take a quarterback with some upside later on. So I've been taking a little bit of Justin Fields lately. How do you guys expect Trey Lance and Justin Fields to actually get some burn? Now, now I'm assuming this question is alluding to the comments from the Bears coach recently. Right. And said, San Francisco. And yeah, San yeah, Francisco. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I know Nagy came out and literally said, like, strictly – Dalton is our day one starter. And right. Justin Fields is number two. Like, he blatantly said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that kind of caused a little uproar in the fantasy community. Um, I actually think he's telling the truth. You know, I really do feel like he believes week one, Dalton is going to be out there under center. Now, the question you ask is how soon do I think he's going to start? And I think I was talking to one of my friends about this the other day, but I literally think as soon as week two. I mean, I think it's definitely possible Whoa. that soon. Okay. Do you know who they play week one? No, I don't. Oh, you got to you got to pull I got it up. This right here. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Show it to Let's me. Let's go to the glasses on real Show quick. Show it to me. <laughs> I know who they play. They play the Rams week one. <laughs> he okay. started week two. <laughs> <laughs> he started week two. I've been better about my predictions. He started week two. They play the Rams week one. He started week two. So yeah. So I personally feel like 
It could yeah. be as a, it's almost like the Deshaun Watson situation where Deshaun yeah. Watson came in week three or Herbert I think came in week two or week yeah. three. Mm-hmm. I really feel like something like that might happen. Um, I, I think their bye week is actually week ten. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if they can hold off to week ten because that's typically when you would say the rookie quarterback is going to take over after he, yeah. he gets that bye week to really get acclimated as the starter in practice. Um, similar to Tua, like that's how Miami yeah, sort of put yeah, Tua. Yeah, similar to that. But and, and that situation was very unique. They forced it. They were a winning team. Right. Yeah. A, they playoff were a playoff team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. After, you know, being, you know, at the bottom of that mm-hmm. division for a number of years, and they forced Tua in there. Yeah. So you With no was, offseason. You, so you knew that's kind of their plan. Right. Going in for yeah, a while. you know so, that, yeah. So I don't know if the Bears are going to wait that long. Mm-hmm. I, I really, truly feel Dalton is just not going to perform as well as we uh, fans and coaches would hope. And just the, just the 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 chatter much, is gonna be fields 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 get them in there you know how much more tape of Dalton do we need <laughs> right <laughs> like really like what kind of that, if, if you're asking yourself okay man I'm not sure if I should I, I really love Justin Fields but I'm not sure if I should draft him because I'm worried about Andy Dalton right mm-hmm. ask yourself when was the last time you drafted Andy Dalton right okay right, when was the last right. time you watched the game and you felt like oh Andy Dalton is a transcendent player or you know a, a QB that can and I'm not knocking Dalton. You know, play. He's, he's been, yeah, he's been serviceable, but he's not anything in my mind that's really going to like uh, be someone who can elevate that team. Right, right. So, getting back to like a point we made earlier about news, anticipate this news. Okay, right, right. It's coming. I actually was a, I you know when it came to the San Francisco news and the Chicago news, I thought that this was going to be swapped. I thought it was going to hmm. be the San Francisco head coaches talking about how it's Jimmy Garoppolo going to start, start day one, and we want to work Trey Lance in, and that Justin Fields, we're, you know, is going to be an open competition. Right. And the news were almost flip flop. Right. So do what we talked about earlier. Buy the dip. Justin Fields' ADP now is probably going to be depressed, mm-hmm. and he is a running quarterback. Yep. Konami so code. potential Konami code. Yeah. Coming in his first year, we know those running back, those running quarterbacks coming into their first year where defenses don't really have great tape. Mm-hmm. Offense is a little bit different because Dalton is not a running quarterback. Mm-mm. So defenses have seen something different on tape from the Chicago Bears for a, a number of weeks. This this QB could come in potentially and really, you know, do some things. Kind of like far what Jalen Hurts did last exactly, year. Exactly, yeah. exactly. A very similar type situation. Only, you know, he's, you know, Jalen Justin Fields seems to be a better prospect. Now, now tell me what what was the quotes from the 49ers this week? I think I missed that. What, what, what was going on there? So, ultimately, on the 49ers, they like what they see in Trey Lance. I think we all think that or all believe that Trey Lance is actually going to get more burn earlier than what, what we had anticipated before. Again, I don't buy it. I don't yeah. buy the quote. I don't buy what they're saying about Trey Lance right yeah. now. I really don't get the hype on Trey Lance from the beginning. I I see him as someone who has tremendous upside, but I, so th- how many th- games have we seen of Trey Lance? I mean, we don't need to see a lot of games. Okay, these quarterbacks come yeah. in, they run, they put up fantasy points. It's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> it really is that simple. Just and then give you add in, yeah, and then you add in you know uh, being in a Shanahan offense. And we've seen some interesting things on Twitter regarding Shanahan offense, and, and I don't want to discount this in any way. Uh, but we've seen, I think it was Ian Hart who put out. Uh, That's my boy. Yeah. I love his he's, tweets, Oh, he's man. great. I, I mean, I don't know tweets. anybody who yeah, grinds as hard. If you're not following yeah. Ian Hart's when I meet on him Twitter, you, you're doing it wrong. I love his Twitter yeah. account. But he, you know, he had a very interesting tweet uh, and nugget about that offense, about Shanahan himself, who's not put up a you know a top 20 offense. Offense, over. yeah, yeah. I, I remember but, seeing that. My rebuttal to that would be like, what has you know, who have his QBs been in that span? And then also, we've seen a number of wide receivers that have been more than fantasy relevant mm-hmm. over that period of time. Mm-hmm. We've seen George Kittle be fantasy relevant over that time. We've seen a number of running backs week in and week out be relevant. Mm-hmm. So there's fantasy relevance in that offense. And we've seen Garoppolo at times when that offense is clicking be fantasy relevant. Right. Offensive line can't be any better. We now have a healthy Devo, a healthy Brandon Ayuk, presumably by the start of the season, a healthy George I Kittle. Think he's healthy now. I think I saw him practice. Ayuk yeah. Was, so. A healthy George Kittle. For however long we get George Kittle. Uh, please, can we get a healthy George Kittle for the entire <laughs> season? And then, you know, uh, we got potentially Mostert and Sermon, Sermon yeah. in the backfield. So we have this offense that's really set up. Mm-hmm. I love their schedule. I've talked about I can't 
talk enough about the San Francisco schedule. Right, right. Again, go look at their schedule, okay? Even if you're not a strength of schedule person, just go look at their schedule. There's nothing on their schedule that's concerning. So for me, Trey Lance is that Konami code. He's the best Konami code late quarterback you can possibly say. You're not drafting him to be your starter day one, okay? Right. And the quote said that they're basically – it's an open competition is the way that this quote was described. Even if he's not starting day one, day two, day three, if you're entering a large field tournament, especially when the last three weeks of the season, minus week 18, are the money weeks, the weeks where, you know, over a three-week period, your points are accumulated and the, the top leader in points wins that grand prize, you want – Somebody on that San Francisco team, because I right. guarantee you somebody on the San Francisco team is going off, and you likely want Trey Lance. Now, now, okay, so I agree with everything you're saying. I'm a little bit a little bit more lukewarm on Lance for, for a variety of reasons. Not so much his skill set. I definitely believe he's a Konami co-quarterback, fantasy greatness all within him. Um, but I'm more looking at the situation. Um, you know, we typically when you have a quarterback drafted high, you know, they usually go to teams that are that are not that great, um, weaker teams. You know, teams that are that just perform poorly. This situation is actually a Super Bowl contending team. Um, great defense, and you just mentioned all the weapons. They even have a few other weapons that I know a lot of people are not aware of. They they um they, they have Jeff Wilson, who actually is going to eventually come back. He'll come back. I want people to forget that Jeff yeah. Wilson's not going to miss the season. Yeah, keep an and eye if on if the If he pup comes list. back yeah. at the right time, he's going to be fresh legs, you know. Um, and Jeff Wilson is actually pretty talented. Ever since the Texas days, uh, they they got this other rookie in the sixth round, Elijah Mitchell, uh, who's pretty good. I think he went to Louisiana Tech. A pretty good running back. And, you know, the 49ers, that's that offense where, you know, they have guys that go down, they put in somebody else in the running game. Oh, you, didn't even talk, you didn't talk about your – you're not you're going to talk about your who, boy? Who my boy? You know who you're talking about. Oh, Jalen Hurd? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn, I really forgot about my boy. I <laughs> apologize. I yeah. apologize. Yeah. That's my boy. So, real quick, and I'll just – real quick tangent. Jalen Hurd was uh, – he started off at the University of Tennessee. He was actually playing running back there. He was the running back starting ahead of Alvin Kamara. Y'all, y'all should know who Alvin Kamara is. Yeah. Um, he was the running back. He started over Kamara. Um, he had some kind of epiphany. I think he either got hurt or just something happened where he was like, um, maybe I shouldn't play running back, you know, probably not going to be the best for his future. So he decided to switch to receiver, actually transferred to Baylor. Did solid his first year playing receiver at Baylor. Again, he has the running back body. Um, the 49ers drafted him in the third round two years ago. Unfortunately, ever since then, his rookie year, he got hurt for the season, the preseason, and last year he got hurt for the season, the preseason yeah. again. So we haven't really seen him in the regular season yet, but he has all this talent. We he's know, healthy now. Yeah, he's healthy. I mean, he's always healthy to start. So. Yeah, he's always healthy. But, uh, and again, it's a beat writer report. Apparently he looks very good. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's a there's there's a chance that he is the third option. That's what I was gonna say. They, they, they're saying yeah. he might be wide receiver three, which is. Great. I mean, I, yeah. Again, I play Dynasty. I yeah. got him everywhere. But. And this is the thing. You may, you know, this may not be a, a you know, a, a comment or a discussion in terms of okay, get Jalen Hurts on your team. But if a, if he's healthy and is as good as you think he is, and he ends up being the number three wide receiver, we have to take note because that's going to affect the wide receivers around him. Right. It's one thing to have you know, uh, a wide receiver three that is really not going to command targets right. is another thing to have a wide receiver three that is extremely athletic, a playmaker, where the offensive coordinator is going to be thinking, we yeah. got to figure out a way to manufacture him touches. Try to find Jalen Hurd's highlights from the preseason. And again, it's the preseason. It doesn't really matter. But, but just look for those highlights. Look at yeah. the way they used him. Shanahan had a plan for that guy. Now, again, he has to be healthy. But if he's healthy... Watch out. And, and yeah. one thing, and I'm going to go back to the Lance discussion in a second. But one thing I do want to mention, again, I'm the dynasty guy, so I'm always looking at all these deep, deep sleeper type guys. When I mention these players, and you kind of just alluded to it a second ago, I'm not saying you should probably draft them right now. What I'm really kind of saying is be aware of these guys because if the situation presents itself sometimes during the season, you know, you have these waiver wire runs, be aware of what talent these guys might have opportunities because that could be a league winner, you know, yeah. if, you know, like, I mean, we've all played fantasy. You know how it is. You get these midseason league winners, guys that you didn't draft or didn't even know they existed, end up being in your lineup in the playoffs. So just kind of be aware. But real quick, going back to Garoppolo, I mean, Lance and Garoppolo, really. The reason why I'm a little bit hesitant on him is 
I feel like they have this major investment in Garoppolo that they just can't shake. He he, mm. he is owed thirty million. And I was talking to one of my buddies who's actually his name is Elliot. He's a 49ers fan. I didn't realize this. It actually can get out of that contract. Minimal debt money. I didn't know that at the time, but still, they owe him thirty million dollars this year. Um he he has experience in the system. Shanahan's system is not easy. He has experience there. He's had success, kind of like what you said. Yeah. He's also failed, you know. But for what I've been hearing in the the camp reports, he's actually been playing really well. I think Kittle talked him up. Um, I think another player talked him up. The coach talked him up. Yeah. Um, it is going to be a camp battle. But, again, with the Super Bowl aspirations, and if Lance truly isn't ready. Now, remember, Lance only played one game last season in college because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, he played 13 games the year before. Um, that was the year where he kind of got on the map. He threw all these touchdowns, no interception, or maybe one interception. Um, but still, it was Division One AA. Right. So the the competition wasn't as great. As the Car- it's the Carson Wentz, Josh Allen competition. Um, so you know he he he's gonna have a learning curve. Yeah. And I wouldn't expect Shanahan's offense to be easy to learn. So that's the only thing that gives me hesitation as far as how soon I think he's going to get in there. Now, if the 49ers are doing bad, he's obviously going to get in there. If the 49ers are not in playoff contention near the end of the season, he's definitely going to be in there for the, the fantasy playoffs. But if, I, if, if Garoppolo's doing well and they're still in the hunt, I don't know if we're really going to see Lance as early as we think, if at all. This season, now I that's, might be wrong, but that, yeah, that's in the realm of possibility. But that's again, that's why I said you know, we're not. I'm not taking Lance, you know, uh, with the, you know, in the tenth round or anything like that. Right. Uh, I think he's someone that I want to stash. So you know, yeah, yeah, it's in yeah. the later rounds, and I see him available. He's someone that I want on all of my yeah. teams. And y'all know hmm. I'm not a Lance guy, but y'all saw I drafted him yeah. the other day. So mm-hmm. I, I I agree with that for sure. You listening? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you double shit on me. Hey, gotta gotta get yeah, some of that. You know, I put him in there. No. <laughs> So let's talk about 2021 running backs, second year running backs. Specifically, let's talk about your picks because I like to do a pick them at the end of our episode. Let's talk about your picks for best 2021 season and worst 21 se- oh, 21 season. I, I really feel like we might say the same best, but I'll let you go first. No, 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 you go first. Okay, so you can't steal mine then. <laughs> my guy, and y'all know this has been my guy for a while, is Cam Akers. All right. Oh, uh, you know, really? See, I knew you. I, knew, that's, I just said <laughs> Come on, that. now. Number one is an easy one. Number you two, said, you know how high I was. Hey, on that's Cam why Akers. I said we were going to say the same guy. Okay. I, I love Cam Akers. Okay. I love his situation. Even with Florida State. When he was at Florida State, and me and you talked about this a lot last year, yeah. the, the offensive line for the Rams was weak in 2019. Yeah. So going into 2020, that was my main concern. He was always kind of trying to talk me off the ledge a little bit, talking about how they improved and, you know, this, that, and the, the third. But I was like, man, they didn't gain anybody. Mm-hmm. They got continuity. older. Continuity. I'm telling you, continuity. They got older. Yeah. Their best guy was the oldest guy on the Whitworth. team, Whitworth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, Ugh. but yeah. But at Florida State, they also had a very weak offensive line and a weak yeah. offense, and Cam Akers still produced. So going to the Rams, that was the one silver line I had, like, he might still be able to yeah. do something because yeah. he produced in college. Yeah. And to start the season, Cam Aker wasn't really getting much burn at all. I think it was Henderson and um, Malcolm Brown that was getting most of the burn. Yeah. Um, the, and both of them actually had good games here and there. Yeah. But by the end of the season, when Akers had that backfield to himself, he was shining. And, and he was shining in, in all facets. The run game, the receiving game. Um, they kept him out of the field. And he looked good. You know, he was getting these bunches of yards. Um, and I, and I, I love what I was seeing. Uh, in the FFPC, they have this uh, playoff tournament. And um, Cam Akers was on literally all my teams. And I don't even think he was really regarded as that highly at the time. Um, but now everybody knows him. I think he's being taken at the end of the first, early second. Uh, I still love the situation. They added Matt Stafford, which I feel like is going to open up quite a bit for him. Um, that That's definitely my guy. Yeah. Now, you, you, you also wanted me to say the guy I dislike the most? Yeah. Um, ugh. It kind of is what you were saying earlier, JT. And, and I love JT's talent. Yeah. But, but I'm really scared about what's going to happen there. And, yeah. and I don't believe in Wentz. Now, Wentz is in a better situation. He might produce, but... Wentz looked so bad last year. Even with that offensive line, you but still he's, he's rejoining. He's rejoining his boy. Okay, Frank Wright. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. So but, they, but still, you 
He looked just so bad last year. He, mm-hmm. I mean, he looked broken. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. he really did look broken. And yeah, that offense line is great, but that offense line is going to be great also for Marlon Mack. Yeah, it's going to be great for for Hines. Yeah, um, and that's just the guys we know about. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't know what's going to happen. You know. Yeah. Um, so me and and then the, his ADP, he's the highest drafted out of all of those. Mm-hmm. If he was going like in the second or the third, yeah, maybe I like him a little bit more. Yeah, he definitely but, not get him in the but, third. But, the yeah. Second, yeah, but where he's taking right now in his situation, I mean, he looked good. He was a great prospect. Yeah, but I just can't. I, yeah. I can't get with it. So, hmm. Yeah. So, so wait for Jonathan Taylor and then buy the dip. AB best and worst second year running back of twenty twenty one. Yeah. Oh, you took my you way. Yeah. You can't yeah. say anchors no more. <laughs> yeah. Anchors number one. And then getting back to college film real quick, you know, because it's hard for me to describe in words why I feel like someone popped off tape versus someone didn't. You know, you could watch Cam Akers film and think he didn't really do anything in terms of like long runs, you know. In Florida State. Exactly. Yeah. But when I watched his tape, I saw talent that to me easily translated to the next level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was really, really impressed by his tape. And that's one reason why I was so high even, on him. Even I feel like he was the number one rated running back coming out of high school, too. Yeah. So yeah, he was yeah, always a highly yeah. touted prospect. Yeah. So, but you can't take Acres. So I can't take Acres. So I'm getting a little creative with this one. Uh, my guy's gonna be AJ Dillon. Mm. Uh, okay. And so there's okay. a couple reasons behind this. Okay, I like that. One is because of his ADP. Okay. Okay. I love his ADP. Where's he being taken right now? Uh, right now he's going. I think anywhere between ninth round, yeah ninth. Yeah. Sometimes you can get him in a tenth mm. round. He's going around that, you know, what I call expensive handcuff region. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some like wide that. receivers that are, you know, I think are some uh, talented wide receivers that go in that range. But if you're a team that's drafted uh, a number of wide receivers and you're looking for some running back depth or you went zero RB, uh, you need to be trying to get A.J. Dillon on all your teams. Because he's being drafted as a handcuff, but he may easily be filling that Jamal Williams role. Yeah. And we may see him get a number of red zone carries. And as far as narrative street, you know, walk down the street with me real quick. Let's go. Okay. We already, we heard the news about Aaron Rodgers that just right. dropped today with Jay Glazer coming Wait, out. I don't think everybody's heard it, so you, like, let okay. him know. Well, let you tell, you, you don't want okay, to Okay, I, I found the tweet. Yeah. Jay Glazer basically said, um, from what he's hearing, Aaron Rodgers is not coming back. Yeah. Um, he's dug in. I think he um, definitely does not want to come back. Yeah, he definitely doesn't want to come back. But yeah. I saw another um, post from somebody else. I think it was a former Packers beat writer that said, ever since the news dropped, yeah. Aaron Rodgers has been dug in, and like the Packers should start taking those calls. Yeah. That's what I heard. So. so, you know, we've been going back and forth about Aaron Rodgers. At first, I was leaning, you know, I was like 70-30 that he was definitely gone. And then the James Jones interviews – him, you know, James Jones doubling down saying he's talked with Rodgers, he feels like he's going to come back, push me to like, you know, 55, 45, that Rodgers was coming back. I know, specific I know. Numbers. Okay, yeah. 49, 43. Yeah, yeah, these specific <laughs> numbers. This is literally how I calculate this, okay? So, yeah. so much so that I literally had not drafted any Aaron Jones. I have zero Tanya. I didn't draft uh, Devontae Adams. That, that, Interview pushed me enough to draft my first share of a you know a significant Green Bay Packer. I drafted Devontae Adams in the late second round. Which is still good value. If you it's still good value. It's still good value. But that's not where I want to take him if they don't have any Aaron Rodgers. So, again, we're going down Narrative Street. You know, it's a long street. <laughs> so, this news drops, and Jay Glazer is not somebody to be messed with. Right. Right. He's coming out telling and me that's that. that's why I posted yeah. in the group chat. Like, if this is saying, somebody. If real. he's saying that, you know, Aaron Rodgers is definitely – you know, does not want to come back or is like dug in. You know, it was a strong statement. Mm-hmm. For him to say that and to post it means that he didn't just do so, you know, with, with you know, without talking to Aaron Rodgers himself or Correct. at least someone that's very close to that camp. A good source. A good case. source, exactly. So with that in mind, I have to now lean 2080. 80% that Aaron Rodgers is gone. Okay. okay. 20% that he stays. So, again, we're going down Narrow Nar- Street. So, that means that Jordan Love is likely the quarterback. Mm-hmm. They weren't a Super Bowl contending team with Rodgers last year because they didn't make the Super Bowl. They were contenders, but they weren't a Super Bowl team. They didn't make the Super Bowl. To lose someone like Aaron Rodgers, who was the MVP, and bring in a quarterback, I don't care what they're saying about in training camp. I don't know, you know, who knows how good he will actually be, but we heard – Plenty of quotes that 
he did not look at all ready to to be you know a starting quarterback in an NFL uh, early in training camp. Yeah, or last year, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So what that tells me is that this team is not going to be anywhere near as good as it was last year. They're likely not going to be contenders. They may start off that way, but they're likely not going to finish that way. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, this is a losing team. Again, follow me down Narrow Street. When I see losing teams or a team that's likely going to be going down that road, immediately I start thinking about the younger players on that roster. Mm -hmm. Because what's the franchise going to want? What are they going to want to do? They want to prepare for their future. Prepare basically. for their future, and they're going to give the younger players some more run. And they're also not going to want to waste some of their more veteran players should they be contenders later on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying Aaron Jones is you know, going to be relegated to the bench or see a significant cut in his work, but I think, number one, I think A.J. Dillon, regardless of what happens to Rodgers, was going to probably see the Jamal Williams role. Mm -hmm. And I think his role is one that could potentially grow throughout the season, and three, on a losing team, that low ankle sprain sometimes may become a high ankle sprain mm -hmm. so someone like aaron jones who gets nicked up he's a running back running backs get nicked up it's a 17 game season and aaron jones has been known to get hurt they may sit him out it's already a conservative uh organization when it comes to injuries Man, anyway yeah so i look at aaron jones as someone like there are a number of different things that can happen to where he can provide you fantasy value mm -hmm. You're only drafting him as a handcuff, but you can use him, you know, week to week or for a bye week fill in or when you're in a pinch. But then, oh my God, if Aaron Jones goes down, we saw a, a glimpse of this last year. Now, I can't say enough about Aaron Jones. Now, so. now just to add before you go to the yeah. next uh, player, um, don't forget Aaron, I'm sorry, AJ Dillon was a second round pick. Mm -hmm. So he definitely has a draft capital. If you look at the other second round running backs from last year, mm -hmm. That's the Cam Akers, the Jonathan right. Taylor, the J.K. Dobbins. Antonio Gibson, I think he was taken in the third yeah. round. Um, so he's – all these other players that have actually been successful in producing NFL, he's like the one that is in that same draft area that hasn't really got the opportunity. Yeah. And you would think if the Packers drafted him so high – I mean, I know they just paid Aaron Jones. Yeah. But they they're not gonna draft a running back in the second round yeah. and not plan yeah. to utilize yeah, yeah. him. So yeah. so definitely I like that pick right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so second year running back that you're down on. Yeah. Okay. So I mean I was gonna say Gibson or or Swift <laughs> just to throw you, but I, 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 let me give him some. Let me give you know, let me Gibson, give some a little. You know, <laughs> let me, yeah, let me dig you. down deep. They didn't they didn't come here to hear Gibson may you know have some potential. Yeah. Uh, running back that I am not going to be hot or that I think is going to take a second year dip. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, this is this you know to keep this in context. This is all related to their ADP and do I think their production will match their ADP? You know, am I going to be happy at the end of the year that I drafted this guy? I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. Yeah. J.K. Dobbins. You know, like I said, you know, I really understand and learn how much I like a player or dislike a player or his situation. We don't dislike players. We dislike clock. players. Yeah, when we're on the click yeah. clock and you click that button. And I have one share of J.K. Dobbins. And immediately after I clicked it. You felt bad. I felt bad. Immediate yeah. regret. Immediate regret. Just felt, eh. You know, I was just yeah. like, like rest of the draft, that. I was just like, eh. Yeah, yeah. I even texted you. I was like, I was like, so where were we at on J.K. Dobbins again? <laughs> You're like, yeah, we don't like him. I was like, I know. Damn it. <laughs> uh, look, he's someone that like, you know, FFPCs, we're getting him in the third round. I think mm -hmm. in other drafts, you know, best balls, he may be, you know, he may be going as high as the early second. I've been seeing the second. On the yeah, game. and so it's just one of those things that it, for me, it's very, very difficult to, to to envision a scenario where he's seeing a significant amount of passing game work and where Gus is just relegated to the bench. I just, you know, I think we're going to see enough of Gus, not where it's like a full-blown RBBC, but we're going to see enough of Gus. We're going to see, obviously, a whole lot of Lamar, and we may see that passing game really, you know, mm -hmm. open up. I, I truly do think that it's going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. I truly do think that that's going to happen. It goes all the way back to my main point with Pittsburgh. You understand your deficiencies because teams will, you know, teams learn or de you know, opposing teams learn what your weaknesses are. They learn what Baltimore's weakness was last year. They learned that there was they couldn't pass the ball, and they defended them as such. And Baltimore's offense struggled. And you heard multiple people from that organization, players included, talk about how they had to improve on that. 
They're not going to go to a completely passing team, but they're going to have to open up that offense. And so I, see, I think we see more work or more targets towards the wide receiver in the tight ends versus the running backs. So that's just not something that Lamar has historically done. And that's not something that offense does in terms of throwing to the running backs. I know they said they're working on it in practice, but if your offense does not do that and has historically not done that, I need to see it first before I actually believe in it. So J.K. Dobbins for me is uh, – uh, I probably won't be clicking that button unless it's uh, later. Personally, I'm high on Gibson. I'm selling Swift. To be honest, I think Jamal Williams being in that backfield is probably going to take that that starting job. But that's all that we have this week on the first and fifteen. Wait, wait, wait. Before oh, we, wait. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But we got to say, yeah, man, happy birthday. Hey, happy, yeah, oh, come on. Happy come on, birthday. Come on. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, sir. What is it? Yes, 45? sir. Forty-five. <laughs> come on, man. Thirty-six. 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 Yeah. I'm getting no. You calling? You calling Zeke? Oh, well. <laughs> right. no. happy, birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank I'm just glad we made it through the pod because I yeah. honestly thought. Uh, you was gonna get the call. And we were right, 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 right. Yeah. So right, I thought we were gonna celebrate two things today. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But it's okay. Yeah. We, we can, that news we can celebrate the other one the yeah. next time. We're waiting. You know? We're waiting. Listen, any day now, my yeah. wife could give birth. So yeah. you know, Added hopefully, to the first and fifteen family. Right, right, yes, right. Sir. Absolutely, absolutely. Right.